Hey everybody and happy Monday. You know what that means. And look, we have a special guest today. Go grab your favorite cup of hot cocoa, a few of your favorite cookies, pull up a chair and sit and chat with us a while in today's episode of Cocoa and Cookies. Monday morning. It's not so good around here. No. <laughs> it's a rough one, y'all. Very rough. We came home last night about, what time did we get home? After 11. After 11, and the power was out. Had to call the power company. It really didn't take them too long. They got here, what, about 12 15, 12 30? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And then how long did it take them to fix it? 20 minutes. Maybe 20 minutes. What ended up happening? Tell them what happened. A squirrel got in the transformer. So he got in the transformer. He popped, did he blow the transformer? No, he popped the fuse. Popped the fuse. So the transformer was technically okay. Mm -hmm. Just caused the fuse to pop. Yeah. <laughs> that, that happens quite often around here, actually. We just had the same thing happen a couple months ago. Yeah. Hadn't been long. So the joys of living out in the woods, you guys. Oh, my word. So it didn't take long, but... Come to find out, we could tell when the power came back on because the way our stove clock does, I don't know how it does it, but somehow it knows how long it was off. Is it is it like a battery back up in there? I don't know. Because you can't see the display when the power's off, but when the power comes back on, it'll flash how long it's been since the last reading. It had been off like eight and a half hours, so it had gone off, well, what time would that be? About three in the afternoon? From 11.30 at night, about 8 and a half, so about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So the freezer was all defrosted, and fortunately, though, we did not have anything in there. I think we had a quarter of a bag of tater tots left. I think that's all we had, besides our little ice packs, because <laughs> we have not had a chance to go to the grocery store yet. You guys have been, been with us. We've been so busy, so we didn't lose any food that way. The stuff in the refrigerator was still cool to the touch. So that stuff was okay. So we didn't lose didn't lose anything this time. Thank the good Lord for that. Okay, we got to show them our mugs. I forgot what kind of mug you got today. Yes. Yeah, let's hold it there a minute so I can zoom that camera in. I like that one. Mine that goes with that has is it shoes or lips? Shoes. I think mine is shoes. His is the necktie, and then I have this one. Pocono Palace. This is where we went on our honeymoon, you guys. This is an old, old mug. And look at there. It looks like there's a crack in that. Is that a crack? I don't know. Feel it, Steve. I, my nail is going in that. That's just a scuff. Bad scuff. Anyway, we got this on our honeymoon in Pocono, Pennsylvania. That's where we went on our honeymoon a long time ago. We just celebrated 28 years in July. Of being married and November we will celebrate 31 years of being together homecoming game 1985 right. tell the good folks that story tell them what tell them the story how we started going together nowadays these young people call it dating we call it going together I never have understood that term dating you guys help us out because we we work with the youth at our church we have this conversation quite often. We will have 11, 12-year-olds in the children's church. And then whenever they get on up in the youth around 13 or 14 years old, they're not allowed to get in the car and go anywhere. So they're technically not on a date, but they are dating. <laughs> so we ask them all the time, how is it possible to be dating if you can't get in the car and go on a date? Wouldn't that be our, our old term was going steady or we were going together? Is how we would say it. But now, nowadays, they're dating. Matter of fact, we had some kids come in children's church a couple weeks ago. Nine years old were engaged. <laughs> and I told them, there is no way you're engaged at nine years old. Oh my goodness, it is so funny. But they they are relationship driven. Yeah. Man. Engagement is over, I think. 
Yeah, that engagement is over. That didn't last very long. <laughs> but they are driven by relationship, you guys. It is crazy. And it's really actually quite sad, honestly, that these kids that young think that relationship is so important. But anyway, tell the good people how we started going steady. We were in the band and we were in the stands. And if I remember correctly, I said something about holding your hand. And your dad said that it would be okay if we were going together. And I said, well, tell him we are. Yeah. My stomach's growling. I don't know if y'all can hear that. So, you said, well, just tell him we are. So, I held your hand. But then I had to ask you the next day, were you really serious? Because, like, I still didn't know. Okay, is he just telling me to lie? Saying we're going out so he can hold my hand? Or what's the deal? And you said, no, I was serious. So, that's pretty much how it happened. It was pretty serious. <laughs> so all these years later here we are that was november 15th 1985 we're getting old hmm. yeah. <laughs> i feel it today oh man it has been a rough morning you guys it's been a rough morning of course we had a very busy day yesterday we've had just a busy we have just a busy life most days totally busy but then on top of all that when we got home last night the power was out and I had videos to edit to get up for Vlogtober. We had to get the devotional up for the second channel. And I had no internet, no power. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I don't even remember what time I got done and came to bed. Did you happen to notice what time I came to bed? I don't remember. Bub had to wait for me to get done because he still sleeps out here on the couch temporarily. And uh, hopefully that will change. We've got, we've got the bed for him, the little air mattress for him. And now we're just waiting to get her her new room painted so we can move that in there. We didn't want to... Huh? We got to get the ceiling. Oh, yeah. We got to... Well, we can work on the ceiling this week. We have all the stuff, right? No. We don't? No. What do we need? The mud. I thought we still had a whole thing of mud. Yeah, something, but I don't think it's going to be in there. Oh. Well, then we need to work on that. Mike can get that done this week because these poor kiddos, they're waiting to get in those rooms, so... This is my philosophy. You guys tell me if you feel the same way. I didn't want to move all her stuff back in there just to have to move it out to paint it. So now that our stuff is out in our room, I wanted to get everything in her room painted and complete before moving her stuff in. So that's kind of the little bit of hold up there. So it's kind of delayed them, but I, I just can't see in the middle of all the rest of the chaos of our life moving all her stuff in and just have to move it back out. Because then you're going to have to move his stuff out to boot, do his room and then move it back in. So, no. Nah, that's just not not going to happen. That's not smart, I don't think. So, whose room is whose? I think she's taking the little room now. And he's going to take the bigger room. Mm -hmm. The plan was, we have two, two, our two rooms down on this end are not proportionately even at all. <laughs> the room that she has always had is a 15 by 13 and a half or 15 by 14. It would be considered in a double wide. It's a large room. It's a big room. It's, matter of fact, it's only one foot shorter than our room because ours is a 16 by 14. So her room is pretty big. And when we first got the house, when we moved in here, we only had her. I wasn't pregnant with him yet. And we knew eventually that we wanted another child. And we knew we would start trying not really long after we moved in here. We moved in here in November of 1998 and we knew we wanted to start trying around January because we wanted them to be about two years apart. <clears throat> but since we only had her, we had her little bed and all that kind of stuff that she had already at being a year and a half. No, she had just turned a year. She turned a year in October. We moved in in November. So we still had, she was still in was she still in the crib? I guess she was. Yeah. So we put her in that big room. And we just had the little room as a spare room. All our junk was in there until he was born, remember? <laughs> because we were trying to move. And it was just all crammed with junk. So that's just kind of how that happened. How she got the larger room. So then whenever he was born, we put him in the smaller room. Which now that we have redone it, we've kind of re... We've redesigned the way his room lays out, although it's the same amount of square feet, which is 11 by 11? Someone it's pretty small. Not including the closet. The closet would make it 11 by 13, but 
the closet, of course, takes up some of that space. So anyway, his is pretty small compared to hers. So when we got ready to tear the house apart, they came to an agreement with each other. We thought she was going to be heading off to college this fall, this couple months ago. And just through rethinking that process and praying about it, just not feeling like that's quite the right timing for her. She's, she's doing some correspondence Bible classes online through Global University, which is a full-out university, fully accredited and all that. She's just chosen to do some of those classes here for now. So she didn't leave to go to school, so now she's stuck with the little room <laughs> because she agreed to trade, thinking that she really would only be home for the holidays and throughout the summer. Yeah, not sure where I was on that story. Got a little bit interrupted there, but basically because she's doing some of her classes through Global, She's home now, and she's not leaving off to school, <laughs> so she's, she's taking the little room for a while. But they're okay with it. I mean, he's, he's extremely excited, because whenever he was a little bit younger, he even had a drum set. We tried to cram in that little room with him. It was, it was bad, as far as space goes, everything. You remember, too, whenever he was little, when he would get those toys out and play with them, there were a couple of days. You couldn't even hardly see the floor. And it wasn't dirty, like, gross. Ugh. It was just his room is so small that when he would pull toys out to play because you had the bed and, and the toys and then his little dresser, you just could not move in there. So, contemplating what we're going to do about her big bedroom set, she's got a big one that was my grandma's from, if that thing is older than me. She had that bedroom set even before I was born. So that thing has got to be 50 years or more old. Very good quality. Nice hardwood. They don't make things like that anymore. You can't find good quality furniture like that anymore. So we've had that in her room now for several years. But I'm not sure that it's going to fit. I mean, it'll fit, but I think it's going to be extremely tight. Yeah. I think it's going to be extremely tight. So... Not sure yet what we're going to do about that. I was talking about it with my mom yesterday. If she wants that bedroom set back. We definitely want to keep it in the family, of course. But uh, I don't know. I guess we'll probably try to set it up. Just see how it works. And if not, go something smaller with her. Like a day bed. Something like that. Where she still has room. She needs a desk and all that. So, anyway. Not sure if she'll go in the spring out to Evangel. That's where she has her heart set to go right now anyway. Or if she's going to wait till the next fall. We're just kind of praying about it. Waiting to see what happens. You know, sometimes when God gives you a vision and tells you something, it's going to happen. But you have to wait on His timing for whatever reason. He can put roadblocks in the way because He knows best. So, we'll see. We'll see how all that works out. But at any rate, that's how that's going to go. So, he's going to have the big room. He wants an accent wall painted where he can hang his guitars up. Turn it into like a little music studio. One more, you can do that. Pretty much, I think, because the windows. The windows. Yeah, unless you just hang them around the windows. If I had it to go back over with again, when we started tearing the house apart, our minds were just on, we're just fixing the mold problem. So we were looking at just putting everything back together exactly like it was. Like we weren't thinking about remodeling because that wasn't the purpose of what we were doing. But as we got to going along, by the time we got back here to this room, which will now be her room, my dad and my mom had said, you know, this would be a perfect time to move windows around or move a wall around if you want to. It's got to come down anyway and go back up. So rearrange it if you want to. And we thought, yeah, that's a good idea. So we did move the, room, the windows in his room. We've, we redid how those went in and changed their location. But in our room and her room, we didn't know we could do that yet. Then we had this. Yeah, we added this window right here behind us. That was never there before. We put in, well, we had already put in these French doors because that was a window that had been leaking before. So we'd already done that. But now our room and, and his room, the windows are exact. And I would have changed these in the living room. Of course, I don't know. Now that we built this wall, I kind of like that there. But I would have separated those windows in there and probably left the little windows off the side walls. But... You know what they say, hindsight's twenty twenty. But then we did do a lot of changes on this end of the house. We ended up adding the office. We, we moved the dining room in here and shut that in and made a little office over there. So just wish that we would have thought about all that from the very, very beginning. But 
Anyway, this was my idea. I thought about putting up a piece of sheetrock on the inside where the window is. You could still have your blinds behind it so that from the outside it looked cohesive. But on the inside, fill in that window with a piece of sheetrock, mud it over, and it would make a solid wall. You'd never even know the window was back there. It would be like a fake, like dormers, whenever you have those high-pitched roofs and they have those little fake windows up there. It's possible we could still do something like that in his room if he wanted that, because we haven't painted his yet. It would be real easy to put, just replace that sheetrock there, cover over that. You don't have to replace it. You just take the corner beat off. Yeah. And frame it in and put a piece of sheetrock. Yeah. So that wouldn't be that hard. So I don't know. We'll have to see what he's wanting to do about that. But anyway, I guess we need to start heading off of here. We got a busy day today. Of course, we're going to edit this one, throw this one up for you, and then we I have got the collaboration that will be up tomorrow. I forgot the time that we're scheduling that. I'll have to go back and look at my email, but I think it's around 9 o'clock in the morning will be that DIY that I've showed you just a little bit of, so you guys will want to see that one. That one's fun. That one's being hosted by the ladies over at Two Utes Transplanted, so I'm excited to see what everybody's doing for their little fall home decor. Then on the 2nd, which is Wednesday, I've been invited to be part of a collaboration with Couponing Forever. So we are doing a fall-themed, or Thanksgiving-themed tablescape, centerpiece, centerpiece tablescape for Thanksgiving. So she is hosting that one, and I'm very excited to be part of that. So I'm going to throw this table together today. I thought I'd be able to do it over the weekend, but we were just too busy. I'm going to throw that up today and get that recorded. That'll be up sometime on Tuesday, the, or Wednesday the 2nd. And I don't think I'm going to be able to film my devotionals today because we have to be at the church tonight, so that's another long drive down. <laughs> 140 miles round trip. We could have spent the night there last night because you're off today, obviously. People can see you're off, but little buddy has soccer practice, so we had to come home so he can be there for that. So... As soon as we check him out of soccer practice, we'll be heading back down to the church for the big fun festival. So, I don't think I'll get the, the uh, devotionals done today. Nah, we'll probably have to do those tomorrow. We'll work on those tomorrow. So, Tuesdays will be a little late. If you're used to those going up at 6 o'clock, you won't have one Tuesday morning. It'll be sometime Tuesday afternoon. So, thank you for joining me today. You're not, welcome. Not your favorite thing being in front of the camera. Nope. But you're so good at it. The peoples love you. Okay. They do. I get comments all the time. I have one lady comment, hope that you don't mind, but I think your husband is so handsome. She needs glasses. No, she doesn't. Look at, listen to him. Listen to him. They love you. And we love them. We love all of you guys and appreciate very much you spending time with us. So we're going to go ahead and get off of here and get our day started because we are already a step behind on everything. So... Thank you very much for joining us today. Hope you all have a great afternoon, and I will see you soon in the next video.